Hi friend, I am Lee Keckner. Welcome to day number two of Coming Home, 33 Days of Self-Care. And I believe that this is some of the most important work we can do while we're on the planet. Taking care of ourselves, connecting with ourselves, and filling ourselves up with so much love that it can bubble out to those around us and ultimately the world. If you would please join me for three grounding breaths. I think that breathing is the easiest, most simple way to calm your mind, calm your heart, and come into the present moment. Um, today when we breathe, we're gonna breathe in through our nose and oh, out through our mouth. And just when you breathe in, you can breathe in something you want more of in life. If you want more love, connection, abundance, acceptance, compassion, whatever it is, we're gonna breathe that in. And then we're gonna oh, release out of our bodies to turn into something beautiful and spread around the world. We're gonna release out of our bodies what we're ready to let go of or is no longer serving us. I am going to release anger old anger thoughts or reactive patterns. I want to be rid of those. Um, and as we do this, if you could put your hands like this, and I'm gonna have you start here in yoga, it's your third eye, but I wanna think of it as our mind. We're gonna start from our mind when we breathe in, and as we exhale out of our mouth, we're gonna come down, we're gonna move to our heart. And that is what I think is the, the key to having a fulfilled life, is moving from your head to your heart. So you guys join me with three breaths as we do that. And in doing that, we will come into the present moment and really show up for ourselves in a powerful way. Okay, so if you close your eyes and uncross your legs and come up to your mind and breathe in. Oh, moving down to your heart, exhale out of your mouth. Another breath in. Oh releasing it and moving to your heart one more breath in and exhaling out of your mouth oh. when we do this we are making the conscious decision to move from our spinning mind where our crazy is stored where our worry is stored where our stress is stored that then spreads down to the rest of our body so we're making a choice to leave that for a moment and to really show up for ourselves so thank you for doing that with me. I'm so excited about this part. As I told you yesterday, we're dividing this into three sections. And the first section is connecting with younger you. So I think it's neat when we know that we all have things in common, like we're, we know we're all going to die. That's one thing that we all have in common. Another thing we all have in common is that we suffered during our childhood. Why? Because we are humans raised by humans and often humans are holding old um, fears old thoughts old stories um, unhappiness and often we take those out on people around us and that's a lot of times what parents do with their kids i know i have done it and i'm still working on that as well so it's not a bad thing it's just a thing that we can use to learn from um, so when we have the sufferings from our childhood those are still sprinkled, all of those little old hurts are still sprinkled throughout our body. And a lot of times they show up in our adult, adult lives to sabotage our adult lives. Why? Because the needs aren't met and they're running kind of rampant in our body. The neat thing is we can heal those old hurts and we can heal those old thoughts. You don't have to carry them forever and that's what we are gonna focus on for the next 11 days. And, it would, and I call this younger you, and a neat way to think about it is this. We know we have these old hurts in our body, right? So instead of trying to picture all these little dark spots in our body, I like to just bring it together as our younger self, the person to whom those things happen to, right? So, so if you could picture inside of your body, instead of thinking of it as old hurts, think about it as younger you, because I think that's a more beautiful, tangible thing to work with. So inside of your body is this younger version of you who had a hard time, who was misunderstood, who wasn't heard, who was maybe abused or neglected. Um, so that's who we're going to work with over the nine days here. And this is really an amazing and tender process that I'm so excited about um, doing with you. 
And here's why it's important to give love to our younger self. Here's why it's important, because our younger self, our old hurts, will continue to show up in our adult relationships until, until we take care of them. And that's what's kind of cool about it, is we are now grown up with adult brains and bodies. These old little kid hurts are still inside of us, but now we are able, we're no longer in that situation. It is not happening now. So now we can find those places inside of ourselves and go to it and speak to it and hold it and actually reparent that part of ourselves. We can heal those old hurts so they don't have to derail us or sabotage relationships for us now. And I wanna give you two examples of currently what's happening with me where my old thoughts or my younger self is rising up to sabotage or to kind of fight, start some fighting. Um, my husband's out of town working on a really cool project for four weeks, for a whole month. I'm so proud of him, my adult mind and my body, I'm proud of him, it's exciting work. The other night he called me and I had kind of had a rough day and I told you that I haven't really been taking care of myself or doing my spiritual practice, that's why I'm so happy about doing this with you guys now. He called me and he's going, I did this today and this and this and then I ran here and here and here and as he was sharing with me, all of a sudden I started getting angry and I started feeling pissed off and I started feeling like, well, while you're doing all these great things, I'm here with all the five kids by myself. And all of these thoughts came up. After he was done sharing and he paused, I said, well, I did all that you did times a thousand. I'm here doing everything by myself. And like this, really this kind of craziness came out of my mouth. And then he was like, oh. And we both just sat there. And I was like, well, I got to go and hung up. And then I was like, where in the heck did that come from? What happened from the beginning of a five minute phone call to the end where I went from a happy to hear my love's voice to screaming at him. So I hung up with him and I spent a little bit of time because I know now when I get really big feelings and emotions that don't match what's happening, it's my younger self kicking and screaming saying I need your attention. So literally when I hung up, I closed my eyes, I went inside and was like, what was that about? What's going on? What do you need? What, what are you trying to tell me? And clear as day, it came to me. My husband being away and me being with all of the kids and feeling unappreciated and alone and having to do everything by myself was directly correlated to growing up when my mother was locked behind her bedroom door and I had to take care of myself and fend for myself and do everything and carry all this weight on my shoulders and it didn't feel fair when I was young. So instantly within a five minute phone call, I went from my adult happy self to an angry shouting temper tantruming at my husband. The good thing about that is that I had awareness about it and I could call him back and say, hey, you being gone has brought up some big feelings from my past. They had nothing to do with you, but I kind of reacted from them. So please forgive me. I'm glad you had a great day and I'm gonna go spend a little time with myself so I can take care of myself. And he was like, I'm so happy to hear that because I didn't know what the heck I did wrong. And he didn't do anything wrong, but my little girl needed me. And that was a perfect way for her to say, hello, I need attention, right? So that's the kind of example. Um, a second quick example, I've been kind of on the spiritual path and doing these and doing all these really great things. And then the other day, because I haven't been kind of taking care of myself again, I said to my friend, well, I'm thinking about doing this and this and this. And she was like, whoa, what's going on? You're going sideways when you had a really clear vision of what you wanted to do. Where's this coming from? And then I went inside again and got quiet and I realized my younger self who felt like she wasn't seen and heard her whole life is worried that I'm taking off or doing great things and leaving her behind. And so she's derailing me to get my attention. So it's just funny to be aware that we are holding these old thoughts and feelings and they're very much alive. And when we're adults and we're overreacting or we're scratching our head while we're being such a jerk, that's the clue that we need to go inside and get quiet with our younger self. So you can, yesterday I asked you to have a journal. If you could have your journal with you, because as soon as we're done today, you're going to write in it.
If you don't have one with you, please write on a paper or whatever and then transfer that into your journal so it's all in one place. And we are going to write in this journal every day. So before you sit down with me, please have that with you. So as soon as we're done, we can you can do the writing or you can do it before bed or whenever is convenient for you. And what's important about this work too, I wanted to say, oh, how do you heal your younger self? One way is to dialogue with your younger self. So it's literally to get quiet, to ask a question, and then to listen, and then to validate. You can also hold your younger self and rock your younger self. I mean, there's so many little things that you can do in your mind, um, really to just love that little girl or boy who did not get their needs met when they were younger. Now you can do it now, and it's amazing work. And it also not only makes you more self-compassionate and self-aware, it makes you compassionate and aware of others. So it really is a healing process for the planet, not just ourselves. I'm just gonna share with you a little bit about how the process is going to work um, when we are finished. But right now, if you would open your journal or if you would open your paper, and at the top of it, you're gonna write connecting with younger me. So at the top of the page, you're gonna write connecting with younger me. And then under that, you're gonna write three things. Number one, you're gonna write, what would you like to say? Number two, you're gonna write, listen, slash, write with your left hand. Number three, you're gonna say, one nice thing to younger you. So for these 11 days where we deal and we talk to and we get to know younger you, as soon as we're done, you're gonna open your journal. You're gonna write day number one. I mean, I know we're on day two, but this is day number one with talking to younger you and that's what this part is. So you're gonna write day number one and then you're gonna do the three things that I told you. So you're going to, and here's what's important about this. Some of it, especially if you've never done this kind of stuff before, your mind, your ego, who wants to hold you back and screw you is going to say, that's stupid. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that. This isn't real. All of these thoughts that hold us in place and cement us to not moving forward. So you can just smile at those thoughts and say, hey, take a hike. I choose to try something new because when I go outside of my comfort zone, I know that that is when I am fully alive. So allow yourself to quiet your mind. Um, here's a couple things that I like to do is either have a picture of yourself from a specific age when you knew you were hurting. You can close your eyes and think about a time that was hard for you or that you felt alone. And you don't always have to have the same picture. You don't always have to have the same age. It's whatever comes forward each time that we go to hear from and connect with our younger self. And the more we hear from and connect with and validate and honor those parts of us, the more that they can become one with us and not have to derail and sabotage us to get our attention. Before you start writing, you're gonna to wanna to quiet your mind. And one way that I think is great to do it is I put my hand over my heart area and I close my eyes and I just take a few breaths. And in my breaths, I start to picture a time in my life, mine is usually around seven years old, when I started to get that, my mom was in bed, and I started to start the story that I wasn't even good enough for my own mother to get out of bed. It was a right, that, right around that tender age where I was starting to be more aware of what was happening, and I started to internalize it and started writing stories about it in my mind. So I like to picture that part of me. And then you're just gonna see that part of you and connect with that part of you and kind of feel it and just give it a minute and just keep coming back to the vision of your face or the intention of wanting to heal and allow yourself to just quiet your mind and to be tender with yourself and to connect with yourself. And really, really tell the thoughts that try and stop you or derail you to take a hike because it's time to show up for yourself in a new vulnerable way because that's where change and love and expansion and abundance resides. 
And then after you sit with yourself for a moment and you feel like you kind of connected to something tender and you stop the judgmental thoughts, you're going to say, hi, Lee, I see you. What would you like to say? What would you like to tell me? And then you're gonna open your journal and you're gonna put your writing, your pen or whatever, in your non-dominant hand. Even though it feels weird, trust me. You put it in your non-dominant hand, for me, my left hand, and you write whatever comes up in your thoughts, whatever comes in your stream of consciousness, whatever you think or feel, whatever comes up, just write it down. Don't overthink it, no judgment. If you can't get anything, then sit quiet for a minute and say, I wanna hear from you, what do you have to tell me? And whatever comes for three to five minutes, write it with your non-dominant hand. And then when you feel complete, you put down your thing, you close your eyes and you go back and you just say one nice thing. So I would say, Lee, I'm so glad or so proud of how brave you were. So you're just gonna honor one nice thing about your younger self because remember that person got you where you are today. That person carried you where you are today. So now we're gonna go back and say thank you to that person and start to love that person with meeting the needs that were met. So that's it for today. I wanted to bring up the importance of how it exists, how it can derail, and how we can heal that part of us. We don't have to continue to suffer. We don't have to continue to fight. We don't have to continue to feel disconnected, sad, or alone. Dear God, thank you for this 33 days. Thank you for reminding me how I am in charge of my healing and my happiness. God, thank you for this simple tool to close my eyes and get quiet, to love my younger self who deserves to be loved and who is perfect just the way she is. God, I send love and light out to everyone watching and to everyone who's not watching. May we all know who we truly are. Amen. All right, you guys, so when you, we are finished today, um, I encourage you to just take a moment, close your eyes, put your hand on your heart. Let yourself be vulnerable and tender. Ask the question, what would you like to tell me or what do you have to say and let it flow. It is one of the most amazing things you can do and we're gonna be doing it for 32 days. Um, so you're gonna get better and better at it and you're gonna be blown away by the things that come forward. All right. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow for day three.